Hey guys, Alan here, AMH Knives. Today I want to talk a little bit about how I have set up my machine and the instruments that I've used. They're a little different than what most people use, uh, mainly price range and just they're daunting to be honest with you. Uh, some are very easy, one is extremely hard to use. Um, so I'll just go through, this will be just a little informational video if you really want me to dive into how these work. Um, just shoot me a comment below. If I get enough, I'll take the time and really lay out a video on running these. There's not too many people that are going to own these pieces of equipment and or want to run them. <laughs> so uh, it's a little more, I've had a lot of questions about it. So I just want to show what I'm using and how I'm setting it up. So uh, first tool I'll show is something that everybody should have. This is just a little scaled up version. Um, everybody... When you set up your machine, you should be leveling this machine. If you're not leveling it, you will never know exactly where you are. There will always be shifts and movements, and you have major issues without leveling your machine. So that is the first thing you got to do, regardless of what you're going to do with setting up your machine. Number one is always level that sucker and get it ready. Uh, what I use, and I just got it sitting here on the laser right now just to show you, is a Johnson two-axis level. So it looks like it gives you a, a Bluetooth display, and it shows you uh, both axes, the X and the Y, at the same time with this controller. So they're Bluetooth enabled. So basically, you sit this sucker on the machine, and you level it using the handheld. And what that gives you is a much easier way to do it, because all my leveling, they're on the feet, they're on the bottom. Every time I want to level it, i got to look at it, move it, look at it, move it, come up, move it. Whereas now I can just sit here with the Johnson in my hand, yeah, great, and, uh, and adjust and get everything in square with both axes at the same time rather than using a regular like bubble style, not a bubble level, but a machinist level. Doing one axis, then doing the other, then coming back, and it can take a lot longer. Whereas having the two axes really makes it quick and easy. Um, so that's the first tool you're going to use. Second tool that I use for my machine is sitting right here. It's running off the laptop. It's an absolute nightmare to get set up. <laughs> so that's why I'm not diving into it crazy. This is a laser interferometer. Basically, what this gives you is probably the most accurate you're going to get in your machine shop, in your home, uh, outside of a laboratory. This is as good as it gets. Maybe not this version. If you're running a Renshaw and you got 40 grand to throw at the wall, have at it. Maybe a little less than 40, but you know what I mean? A lot of tons of money. What this is, is it, it's an old school HP two frequency beam laser, six millimeter. Comes out of the laser, goes through an interferometer. What an interferometer does is it takes those two beams that are coming out simultaneously, it splits them. One goes off the mirror, through the side mirror, and then out to whatever you're aligning. The other, mirror, the other beam goes into the mirror and then goes back. And what that gives you into this receiver. So you have a reference beam, and then you have your distance or your movement beam. And what that does is the beam comes out, it goes to a retro reflector that you install on the machine. I just have mine on a mag base so I can move it all over the place. And then you have to get that aligned correctly, comes back, and then goes into the receiver as well. Um, so the difficulty with this is basically if a car drives down the street, the thing moves. If I sneeze, oh, I'm screwed, it's over. You might as well pack it up for the day. You're screwed. The thing reads 8 nanometers accuracy. What that equates to, it's kind of hard to get a grasp on it, is three hydrogen atoms sitting next to each other. That's 8 nanometers. And it has a resolution of 1 nanometer, which is just, uh, you'll never get there. I'll never see it. 99.99% .99 of people will never see it outside of a laboratory. So as far as that is concerned, you know, the accuracy is just insane. But what it gives you is you don't have to um, worry about being, I guess, easiest way to describe, square with the machine. 
So once you get this thing set up, which takes forever by the way, to get the retroflector lined up, coming back through the mirror, through the receiver, and be able to move the machine the full length, probably takes you two hours. No joke, it's hard. But what it gives you is it gives you a, by the time you've gotten that, you know you're perfectly square. Because if this six millimeter dot moves tense on that mirror, the retroflector doesn't see it and it doesn't work. Software will time out or it'll lock out and you're done. So when you actually get this thing set up and you get it running correctly on the software, you know that you're lined up perfectly. Whereas like if you do it with gauge blocks, a dial indicator, even uh, as I showed in my previous video, when you do it with the linear scales, they're off. They're always going to be off. You move that gauge block one inch. If it's not perfectly square with where you are, and your dial indicator, if it's not perfectly square with it, now you have a cosine error. Now you're changing your movement. So when you set this thing up and you're doing your ball ma screw mapping, or your backlash, or your steps per inch using the laser, when you have it set up correctly, it's going to give you that exact number. Whereas if you fall on putting your little gauge block, your dial indicator, if you screw up on that, which you're not going to be able to tell if you're perfectly straight this time versus the last time you moved it an inch, you're screwed. You don't. You honestly don't know where you're at. I ran into this problem, and it pissed me off to the point where I went ape shit, and I bought this kit on eBay by uh, from a man named Sam Goldsman. I may be saying his name wrong. I'm sorry if I'm. He owns and operates a website called Sam's Laser FAQ. If you look it up, the man's a genius. Uh, PhD, uh, University of Penn, uh, MIT grad. He is the laser guru. And what he has done is he has put together this kit, minus the retro flight, you get a little mirror and some other pieces. But you build the kit, you build the harness, you build the control board, which is sitting back here, that runs this kit. You know, you set it all up. So it's all on you to actually do it. But what it gives you is a manageable price point for owning a laser. Uh, his kit, this kit is the Hobby 2. And I believe it was $750 on eBay, I want to say. I'll hold me to it. Um, but it gives you, you're in the door with this. Rather than finding an old school Renshaw, an Optodyne, even an HP kit. You're starting out on eBay used, not knowing if it works. You're probably in the 6 to 10 grand range. Shit you not. So for Sam to offer this kit at the price point he does, he ain't making no money. He is doing it so he gets people into lasers. That's what he's all about. Very nice man. I, I met him when I picked up the laser. He lives maybe 20 minutes from where I do. Um, so that is the first major tool. And probably it is the hardest tool that I've used to set up the machine. But once you get it dialed in, there's nothing that's going to be more accurate that I'm going to be able to own than this laser. Second, if you if you're watching, there is the laptop down here that is running the software, and it's going apeshit because I'm standing here and physically All moving right. the floor. So, I just want to show you on the bench. It's a little easier than showing it on the machine and far away and all that jazz. So, what this is, is a QC10 Renshaw Ball Bar Analyzer. It's by far the easiest tool out of them all to use, which is amazing for what it does. Basically... This machine, when it's set up and when it's running on your machine, will tell you everything you want to know. It's it's amazing what it does tell you and how it works. I'll show you the, the X and Y is the easiest way to explain. So X and Y, you have a magnetic mount, which is this guy right here. It sits on the bottom, has a ball. On top of that, on your spindle side, you have another mount, which is a magnet. And then you have the ball bar itself. Now the ball bar has a cup end and a ball end. And they all lock into place with magnets. So it does that on your machine. Just like that. And your machine will spin. 
and it'll do a 360 and then it'll come back and do a 360 both directions using this ball bar and you would think ah you know it's just it's spinning around it ain't doing a whole lot it doesn't seem like much when you watch it but what it's doing is this software and the hardware are basically mapping your entire movement in an 8 inch circle at least that's what my machine it fits but I mean you can go up to some huge add-ons which add to the ball bar which you can use on bigger machines for more movement what this gives you is maps so let me go into the software here and I'll show you let's go into some real old let's see Like, this is my first map, I think. Maybe not. I honestly don't remember. It's been so long. But what it gives you is these little maps, and they show you with the, the deviation differential, and then they give you your breakdown of what is wrong with your machine. Mine's at a square by two thou. It's not straight. There's scaling mismatch, which means the difference between the movements on the X and the Y. The straightness on the Y is not there reversal spikes i mean it was all over basically what it says is if it makes an eight inch circle right now on my machine when i did this test i would be fifteen thousandths i don't know that's the easiest way to describe it now you can go into there's all different ways of going into detail with that but it breaks down everything your backlash for squareness and then it even has it's got this monster table of cyclic pitch calculated feed rate all that's taken into account, all these minute differences in the way the machine's moving, and it is used to create, um, there's graphs inside of here, these charts. What it gives you is basically a roadmap of how to fix your damn machine and how to get it running the best that you can. Um, so when I saw this, I'm pretty sure I had a way worse one when I started. I think it was like 30,000 out. It was something insane. And I, I flipped out at that point because of the amount of time that I'd spent on the machine. Turns out, like, the linear rails, I needed to get granite squares and re-square all of them in. That took weeks. You know, stuff like that. Dialing this machine in. But when you sit there and you use this tool with the laser, with the level, and you really dial your machine in. Let me see if I have the last run up here. You can dial your machine in to where mine is today so the circle may look a little funky it's got all these lines and stuff but what you have to look at is the the deviation so each one of these lines that comes off of this circle is five ten thousandths of an inch now is what it's reading at and i've hit a point where i could really dive in and i mean tweak all this shit to just the the sky's the limit with this but what i've gotten it down to is now my circle is within two thousandths over an eight inch circle and the positional tolerance is three thousand so that means within that eight inch circle my machine now I can place a point within three thousandths of an inch period so this has allowed me to really dial in everything and by using the laser I was able to bring in this straightness this squareness with my machine now has got five zeros in front of it it's as good as it's gonna get for me scaling errors I've got super low I mean I could tweak a little bit more and I probably will cuz know myself I end up doing shit like that but it has allowed me to dial the machine into where it is today which is tenfold better than I could ever expected it to be with being a home-built machine uh, so these are just the the tools that I'm using that are little out of the norm for 90% especially hobbyists like myself uh, these tools can be daunting um, and they're got their own price point like a Renshaw ball bar if you find one on eBay right now they're probably starting at three grand more than likely you get into a really nice one six if you get into the Bluetooth QC 20 the newer version that's ten grand so it's big money it's huge money when it comes to this stuff I lucked out I sat there I watched the deals for months before I purchased 
any of this stuff. The ball bar, I believe I got under a grand when I purchased it, uh, but it did have issues. It wasn't perfect. I had to redo all the connections between the interface, the USB out, all of that had to be redone. So it didn't work when I got it. So I was taking a very big risk buying that type of piece of equipment, knowing myself that I, I did a lot of electronics work and I did servo drives and stuff for a, a couple of years that I understood how to fix it, but I, a lot of people it is a daunting task. Um, so that's just a little bit on my equipment and how I've been setting up my machine and the results you can get by doing your due diligence and really tweaking one of these machines. Alright guys, uh, that's just uh, hopefully it's kind of short, it may have been long, I rambled a bit, but uh, just about the pieces of equipment that I'm using for my machine, the laser, the level, and the ball bar. Um, if you want to see more, if you want me to really make a, like an in-depth ball bar video or HP laser video, um, shoot me a message, shoot me a comment, because um, there's a lot involved. Uh, the board not so much, but just how do I set this all up and laid it out, because it doesn't come like this. There's none of the stand, none of this. It's all just parts, and this is how I built it so I can use it and use it often if I need to and be able to move it. Um, so uh, hopefully this video is somewhat informative for people. I know it's above what a lot of people are going to play with. Um, but I just wanted to put it out there uh, and show what I, you can do with this equipment and with the centroid controls to really dial in a machine like this. So until next time, I'll catch you later.